friends, welcome back everyone, welcome back to the grand finals, the grand finale papi of ESL Open Cup Americas number 203. It all ends here. We missed out on the upper semis, but Gumi Ho did take down Beyond 2 to 0. And as a result, we have a TBZ grand finals. And here we go in the bottom right hand corner of side delta we have the south korean zerg player the blue zerg representing dragon kai z gaming my keyboard just unplugged <laughs> representing dragon kai z gaming it is dark and he's being proxy raxed and spawning in the top right hand corner we have his opponent we have the south korean terran player representing cloud nine his new team going for a proxy three racks as that is a third scv on the way it is Gumiho. The three racks is upon us. Gumiho going to be hiding that third racks over on the left hand side. Dark will see this coming ahead of time. He pulls some of the boys as well, believing, of course, that he can shut this down. And we'll see if he can, as we are going to be getting on top of these SCVs. A third SCV has revealed itself. Oh, going to be helping out in that DPS. Interesting that. Because the third SCV is being used to DPS, we actually don't have a third rack. It's still going to be only two. Additional bunkers are going to be on the way or available as well as the racks as they do finish. Raxes do finish. One SCV goes down. We trade one for one. The drone falls and Darky doubles down. He pulls even more boys here. Can he deal with these Marines? It's going to come down to the control. Oh, we get a surround. One Marine does fall. We're camping the production. This is such a risky maneuver here from Dark. The final SCV goes down. No more bunkers from here. We can back off. But can we really ask? Oh, another drone falls. Up. Oh, the starter stepping. Oh, God. Does get chased down in the end. Another Marine falls behind this Dark. He's trying to redrone as desperately as he can. We're down to one Marine left. No SCVs, which means no bunkers. And Dark is in a better position. He has a higher worker count. He's got Queens on the way, Lings as well. Did sustain some damage. Looking at the units last time, it was three drones for three SCVs and three Marines. Really good trade, actually. And you can see Gumi here, he wants that Overlord. The Overlord is nowhere to be found as it's zooming across the map. Gumi here transitioning. And uh, a little bit sad to see no Overlord to kill. <laughs> He's going for the next pillar. We, we're finding it somehow, some way. We'll find the Overlord. Things have arrived. One Reaper does pop out. And Dark. Again, he's going to be able to stabilize back at home. It was such a risky, such a bold move to go right for the Proxy 2 Axe. But he was able to shut it down. I was concerned he was going to take too many drone losses, but no, he was able to, again, control well enough, save his units. And now we are getting across the map. This herbivore will finally be hunted down though. Supply blocking dark. And behind this, ooh, it's gonna be mech. That is two factories on the way. Two factories here as, yeah, give me her out. Mm, okay. <laughs> With this, he should be getting into alien production, potentially cyclones. With two Raxes, I'm still not entirely sure if this is, this is going to be mech or if we go for like a hybrid style of initially Hellions and then into more Marines. I'm curious. It's Gumiho. He's very unpredictable. So both options are on the table. And there it is. We have the reactor. Have the reactor on the way on that factory. Behind this dark, still just droning heavily. Um, he has an overlord in position. He did see one of those factories being built. Didn't see the second. But again, Dark should be feeling pretty confident. He's up to 40 workers at this point. Really solid worker counts. Really solid economy. And there it is. Cyclones are in production. This is what I thought. So it is like double factory. Yes, we're getting into mass cyclones with double reactor. But we have a tech lab on the way and add-ons on the way for these Raxes. Um, so we should be working towards STEM. This should be bio in the end. So it's we're going to be revealing mass like mech, like Cyclone Hellion. But this is just for map control. This is just initially for map presence. And then we're transitioning into bio. So like an actual like hybrid style. 
Meanwhile, back at home, Dark getting into roaches. Hasn't quite quite seen the production yet. It's not fully aware of what is going on. Excuse me, who is sharking around? Does reveal his his cyclones. Does reveal his hellions. Hoping for Dark to overreact. I mean, I say overreact. We are still making a lot of cyclones. Don't get me wrong. And Dark, he can make use of Roach Ravager even against bio-based compositions. And with that, here comes Gumiho again, hoping to try to fly for map control, clean up as much of this creep as he can. The tumors are going down. And we're going to be able to get on top of at least one of those queens. I'll take a lot of damage. Additional Cyclones, Marines are revealing themselves. Stim is not done, by the way, but Gumio is coming out with everything he has. Oh my god, does catch a queen! Does catch two! Big pickoffs here. Tenshu's keeps alive a little bit longer, but the queen goes down. Roach is pushing on forward, trying to get on top of those Cyclones. Good kiting, but two Cyclones go down. With these reinforcements, Dark will force this back. It's a fly block, though. Supply block is huge. Six more roaches on the way. Oh, the roach does get forced back. Eight, eight overlords in production. Ay, ay, ay. Dark trying to set up a surround. Coming in from behind. And making use of that creep. Takes down additional cyclones. Big pig offs. Overseer on the way makes sense like dark. He needs to recognize like is this are we really doubling down on marine production? Are we going into mech? Or what's what's going on? Yeah, he should see yeah, that third racks on the way Still making cyclones. It's like it's like mass cyclone marine. It's so weird <laughs> I think what's really odd about this composition and what's what's really what's really catching me off guard is the lack of starport Like still no starport by the way like a 3-1 story a 3-2 setup no starboard, which means there's no longevity to these marines. We're sacrificing drop play. We're sacrificing the ability to stim multiple times in favor of more cyclones. Finally, the starboard is on the way, but yeah, just a very aggressive style here from Gumiho. Very aggressive. A lot of DPS. But is paper thin? Here we go, we dive on top of the army here, the Roach Ravager army just barreling on through. We're gonna be able to kite, but GG gets called. Dark, he just has far too much, not allowing Gumiho to really get into his game. And Dark will take game number one. GG. Again, a big reason for that was just the opener. Remember, at the start of the game, we had, after the defense, Dark had 40 drones and... Gumi had 27 workers. <laughs> like Dark, he was just in a really comfortable position. Um, just like the just like game number two of Dark versus Cure, it goes to show that these economic leads really early on they snowball out of control. Like they they really get out of hand really quickly. Um, just because of how impactful uh, these economic leads are that early on. So GG, well played. Dark will take a lead. But a lot of that was because of the failed proxy and the failed aggression from Gumiho. And with that, we're getting into game two. We're getting into that second game. I imagine that Gumiho is going to be calming things down at least a little bit. I do hope so. And there's a lot on the table, especially on a map like this. Up next, Equilibrium. <laughs> Equilibrium is going to be coming up next. And yeah, again, this can kind of go either way. Um, I mean, I say that this is typically considered to be a Zerg favored map. Um, the vetoes are done a little bit differently. I, I should speak about this, actually. So specifically for the finals of ESL Open Cups, instead of um, your typical pick ban process, um, it's... Ban, then pick, then ban, then pick. 
here in, in, in the finals. Um, this is why we had a delayed start to the finals. The players were just sorting out how the vetoes were going to work. Um, because of that, you can get away with some of these more typically vetoed maps. Because uh, for those who don't know, usually it's veto everything first and then pick everything after. Um, but because we're alternating, it allows something like this to slip through. And here we go in the top left hand corner of Equilibrium. We have the South Korean Zurich player leading the series 1-0. to zero. But it's the best of 5. Plenty of games ahead of us. Representing Dragon Kaiser Gaming, it is dark. And spawning in the top right hand corner, we have his opponent. We have the South Korean Terran representing Cloud9. Uh, sending out multiple SVs once again, going for another proxy two racks. It is Gumiho. Setting out a third SCV. What? It's the same. It's the same build. It's the same opener. The same opener here from Gumiho. Now, because this third SCV is so late, I imagine once again it's going to be used to protect, less so to throw down the third racks. But we'll see how this is all pieced together. Um, Overlord is coming out, and Dark should see this. Yep. <laughs> this is right in the path of the Overlord. We are committing this time to three Raxes. This time, we're not going to have like that kind of uh, SCV to help DPS and protect everything. And this is going to be confirmed. Dark, he does see everything. The boys are being pulled. Now, the, the difference is we have a wall. We have a full wall set up here, which means the, yeah, the drones, they have to go the long way around to deal with this. They, they can't. Ay, ay, ay. A disastrous start here for Dark. So many of these drones not really doing much of anything. These Raxes are finishing and Marines are on the way. And depending on where these drones are, we can spawn the Marines on one side or the other. Uh-oh. Yeah, the drones, they, they threaten, but they can't really do much else. They have to get out of here. They mine some gold minerals before coming back home. And Gumiho is getting this underway. There we go. Lifts up one of his buildings. Going to be able to get everything on the other side. And the all-in is underway. Now, three Raxes are very committed. We have a spine crawler in production. Lings and Queens on the way as well. Dark lost a lot of mining time early on. We'll see if he can hold. We'll see if he can survive. We have our first spine crawler in the main. We have the second spine crawler here at the natural. They're slowly finishing up. These bunkers, likewise, should finish as well. At least one of them. With the completion of these bunkers, like, how, how do we hold on to the natural? With the help of the spine. Spine crawler getting in position. It's going to be a delicate dance here between the armies. Hoping to drag these Marines out towards the range of that spine crawler. You can see the Dark is trying to set up a surround as well. If he lures out this army far enough, he can come in from behind. Link speed not being researched. No gases whatsoever. We, oh God, we try to dive in. A lot of links are going down. Good target firing on that spine. We collapse on this position. Second spine crawler coming in. Good target firing. Blood transfuse. We keep the spine alive. Marines are going down, but we have enough SCVs here to repair. Oh, so that spine does barely outrange. We are forced to salvage. And Dark, he's holding. He holds onto his natural. I'm impressed. Behind this, Gumiho getting a CC on location. Trying to get out of this, but you can see that. Oh my god. Gimiho has been able to make SCVs pump out workers behind this as well. Up to 25. Like, this defense from Dark has been brutal. But he's holding. Like, he shouldn't die here. What's also important is that because Dark doesn't have any gases, like, there's, there's no counterattack. There's no way to threaten him. Oh, Queen goes down. But yeah, with the lack of gases, no link speed, no lair, no roaches. Dark, he's stuck at home droning. And he's stuck contained to two bases. Can't really break free anytime soon. Gumiho, he's in the commanding position. Again, it was just a really rough start from Dark. And again, Dark, he may have survived, but he's not really living. Not yet. There's our transition factory on the way. Overlord does confirm the CC. As we dive into the main. Dark, he needs to figure out if we're rushing into, like, Banshees or anything like that. 
We ignore the spine crawlers. Once again, we dive on the queens and up. Oh, we don't get one of them. Oh, we do. <laughs> we get the queen. We're going to get another queen as well. I'm afraid to look at the trades here. It's been 26 marines, soon to be 28 marines. Do we get a drone? Up. Oh, up. Oh. oh, we get one. 28 marines for 32 lings, three queens, and a drone. But what is more important is the fact that, again, gases have been delayed, third base is delayed, droning has been delayed, Dark is catching back up, but again, Gumiho doing well for himself. Dark trying to double expand, going for the gold! But he's going to be shut down. Gumiho has already got his two bases, is muling heavily, Raxes are floating back home. And Dark gets zoned away from the gold. We're going to have to take the triangular thread instead. So this is going to be an interesting one. Um, because Ling... Sorry, because the gases are so late, I'm curious if we skip Ling speed. The answer is no. Ling speed is still on the way. Dark double expanding to make up for how late his third is. Uh, because there's no link speed, these Marines, they do well. They cancel. Oh my god, we cancel the fourth. Dark, he just needs to double expand. At least he's getting his third back up and running. Getting back into droning. Behind this, Kumiho getting into double E grades. Double E grades. Double E base upgrades are on the way. Brain getting ahead of myself. We already have a third CC done, soon to be landed on location. But uh, we are going to be far ahead in those upgrades. There's two engineering bays. Drop of Hellions, sorry, drop of Cyclones are moving out. Dark ahead nine drones, but he should be ahead in workers. Like, that's ideally how this dynamic works. Go base on the way. Here comes the drop towards the main. And it is going to be a 1 1. It is going to be melee upgrades here from Dark. So getting to a link base composition. Now, we have seen Dark on Equilibrium before. Um, well, last night, was it Dark versus. It wasn't Dark versus Gumiho. It was Dark versus Beyond. No, Oliveira, that's it. Sorry, my apologies. We cast a Dark vs. Oliveira on Equilibrium, and it was a 30-minute game. We only got to cast half of it because we lagged out. <laughs> but it was a 30-minute game on Equilibrium, and that's the power of this map is that it is very easy to cut in half. So even though there are certain advantages and dis disadvantages for the players, as Dark is just now double expanding once again, trying to get a, trying desperately to get a fourth base up and running as he's oversaturated. Um, we have seen, again, this go all the way to the late game here to split map scenarios you know uh broodlord infester versus ghost thor tank lib we could be headed in that direction if gumiho doesn't assert himself soon and he should be right one one's finishing two two on the way uh stim is kind of catching up as well Gumiho for now just focusing on his economy before pushing out And when he does, oh boy, <laughs> it's, it's, it's going to be quite a push. For now, we're just going to be harassing him with these Cyclones, shutting down these Lings. You mean he should soon be working on his fourth CC. The fact that he isn't is concerning a little bit. So, a couple of things are happening. One, Darky's rushing into Hive. Dark, he's cutting corners, and I and I appreciate this. I think he has to. He's cutting corners. He's taking control of this gold base. He's catching up. This is another big reason why we can catch up as well. The gold is massive, but we don't see gases for Gumiho. I don't see a four CC. I don't see a second factory. This is looking like an eight racks three base all in. And as I say that, these are eight racks. Let's go. <laughs> so Gumiho is still going to just snowball out of control, and we'll see if he can catch Dark in the midst of taking. So this is a three base all in out of Gumiho. He's going to be setting everything across the map again. No fourth, no gases, no second factory, no nothing leading into a longer game. Not yet. So Gumiho is committed. Triple drop in towards the main. Gumiho 
setting up for that main push through the center. Queens are in position. Ultra Cavern on the way. Oh my god. <laughs> we still only have one one, but we're getting ultras. We're getting there. Oh, nice fungal. Up. Can we pick up? Ooh, we do pick up just in time. That was almost disastrous. But this is what Dark has to rely on. Looking at the units tab, we only have one infester. We only had one fungal. And again, we're not slowing down. We're rallying everything across the map. It isn't all in out of Gumiho. Gumiho is up in supply. They're getting top one of those veilings. Top of Marines do go down. Good target firing here from Gumiho. Splits as well. Some of the veilings are going to be spent here. Again, Gumiho just keeps the parade push going. Now, if the game goes on long enough, Gumi, Gumi we can pick up and lift his main and lend that as support. But now trading with that army. No winner minds. We have an infestor behind this. Lee Bay, we're collapsing on the army. We're pushing him forward, getting on top of one of those tanks. But oh god, there are just so many marines. Get dark, he's waiting for the fungal. Waiting for the opportune moments. We don't have the energy for it yet, but oh, we soon will. We do! The fungal does graze the army! Ah, but not enough. As Gumiho is gaining ground, pushing towards the gold. The queens are coming in! The tank is unseized! The tank is caught on siege. We have to pick up. We have to evacuate. Ooh. Every single tank goes down. Only marines are left. And the tanks, they were the backbone of this army. Without the tanks, how do we keep pushing? We don't. Oh, the Immortal Ultra has arrived. The Transfused are too. Oh, God, no. The Transfused. Not enough. But it looks like we have dealt enough damage. Dark cleans us up. GG gets called. And Dark will take game number two, taking a lead in this series. GG. <laughs> GG, well played. Bold of Gumiho to go for an 8 racks. The reason why I say this... um. We were mentioning it at the time, specifically this map, Equilibrium, because of the gold base, like, even if you have a rough start, because the Zergs can secure that gold quite easily, like, you can recover. You can recover thanks to the gold with the rich minerals and rich gas geyser. Um, so, again, even though Gumiho had a decent start, like, it, because the game went on long enough, like, it, it wasn't enough to really get him in a leading position. The A-Rax was scary. But likewise, I, I'm not too fond of 8-Raxing on Equilibrium. I, I'm loving it on some of these smaller maps like Oceanborn or... Um, Oceanborn or... What am I thinking of? Hard Lead, that's it. Hard Lead. Uh, Golden Aura. Here, the rush distance by ground is a little bit longer. Um, Dark, of course. The wherewithal to have those infestors in position to shut down some of the army. And more importantly, to pick off those tanks. Like, the power of the 8-Rax isn't just the Marines. Because you have such limited factory production, your tanks are so valuable. You need your your tanks to um, to stay alive to keep the push to, to keep the push going. And we saw a little bit of I don't know if I want to say miscontrol, but um, Gumiho he was caught off guard at times. Did lose one or two tanks a little bit too uh, carelessly, and with the death of those tanks, I mean that's that's the anchor point of the army. Without them, the army crumbles. GG, GG, well played. We're now getting into game number three. Here we go. We're getting into our next game. We're getting into game number three here. Potentially the final game of the series and spawning in the bottom left-hand corner of Alkyona. We have the South Korean Zerg player representing Dragon Kai Z Gaming. One game away from becoming this week's champion. It is Dark. Spawning in the top right-hand corner. We have his opponent. We have the South Korean Terret representing Cloud9. It is Gumiho. We're doing it again. Every game. <laughs> Every game of this series, Proxy Rax is out of Gumiho. Once again, three SMEs are being sent out. I'm assuming it's going to be a Proxy 3 Rax. And we'll see if he can pull this off. We'll see if Dark can get a read on what is going on. 
Yeah, the Overlord is actually poised to scout everything here to see both Raxes. SCV going to be coming in for a third Rax as well. And it all gets confirmed. It all gets scouted here by Dark. Three Raxes. Now, as opposed to the previous game, remember, because of the positioning, because Gumiho was able to create a, a wall, create a seal uh, using the terrain to his advantage, the drones couldn't actually get on top of it. Could, they couldn't get us around. They could not surround these Raxes. They could not shut down those SCVs. This time they can. And just like that, the SCVs are being surrounded. And it looks like one SCV is going to be going down on the left-hand side. We have two left. And can we break through this? It looks like a second Rax will finish, but only a second Rax. Second SCV goes down. One SCV survives, but only two Raxes finish. And that's going to be a kill on that third SCV. More boys are being pulled. Dark, he knows that he can camp the production here. Forces a cancel. And he is off the surround. No, he surrounds the Marine. Not like this. Another Marine does pop out on the right-hand side. It's going to be zoned away. We do get a kill and another surround is coming in. Dark, he's lost one drone. Oh my God. He's lost one worker so far. He's coming in. He forces the lift. No shot. Dark, he shuts down the three racks. Far, far better than game one. Remember, game one, he lost three drones. Here in game three, one worker. One worker died. Shut down the third Rax, forcing the transition. Oh my, that's double. <laughs> Gumiho, in a, in, a, in a move of desperation, double expanding. Natural and a third base. Two CCs at once. Uh, I mean, we got to do something. We, we got to do something crazy. This is crazy. I mean, oh no, GG, the link gets in. The links arrive. There's nothing else back at home. No units, no wall. GG Dark will take the series three to zero. Wow. <laughs> oh my god, Dark. Calm down, Poppy. Calm down. <laughs> Let him play, Poppy. Let him play. Oh my god, again. Because we were uh, double expanding on the low ground, there was no wall uh, to wall off and to buy time. Typically, we would have uh, a safety CC on the high ground and you would wall off with, with uh, depots and a factory uh, at the ramp. So you could actually stop those lings. Um, but the lings of dark, they just waddled in. There was nothing. There was, there was actually just nothing that could be done. GG. <laughs> GG, well played. Congratulations to Dark, looking dominant here, specifically against the Proxy 3 Rax. And I think what I'm impressed by, I haven't really seen, you know what I have seen? I have seen Solar attempt this and die trying, like lose too many drones and just die to Proxy Raxes time and time again. But for Dark, to have the confidence to send out three, no, not even three drones, to send out his workers initially to shut down um, those SCVs to make sure that not all three bunkers fit, not all three racks is finished, to pull extra boys behind that to camp the production. That's a very risky thing to do. Like, again, if the control was any worse from Dark, if he wasn't able to get surrounds on the Marines, if he wasn't able to shut them down, and if Gumiyo was able to kite well, like, he could punish this. He could kill workers. He could snowball out of control, but dark the, the confidence like that's that's what's impressive to me like the confidence to, to go for these kind of reactions and to shut down these proxies in such a dominant uh, manner oh. <laughs> gg well played congratulations to dark as he uh, is going to be this week's esl Open cup asia champion to for the 200 sorry esl Open cup america's champion for the 203rd edition and uh yeah with that we are gonna be done here tonight we're <laughs> We are going to be done here this morning uh, as we wrap up the finals and we get ready for our next broadcast. Um, we have another cast in five hours. Yeah, five hours time. Five hours time. Going to give me enough time to get some breakfast. I'm starving. I need some breakfast. I need to just like have a shower. I need to like think about dark for a little bit. I need <laughs> and um, yeah, I need to get ready for uh, for what comes next as we do pay out those predictions uh, for those that are curious let me just double check i need to confirm whether we are live in five or four hours i'm uncertain 
Uh, five hours time. Okay. So in five hours, we're going to be having a replay cast. We're going to be having a replay cast of GSL, um, of the GSL Renovate. Last week, we casted Group A. This week, we're casting Group B. Uh, we're not going to cover the semis and the finals just because, ah, you know, they're, they're on YouTube and they're, they're recorded by uh, by Tasis and State. It's all good. Uh, but we will be covering the group stage uh, of the round of eight. We already covered the round of 16. Um, so, yeah, that's what we're going to be casting. We're going to be casting more dark, more dark tonight. So look forward to it. <laughs> that's going to be in five hours time. Um, and, yeah, we have just a stacked week of casting. We uh, On Wednesday, we're going to be covering Kung Fu Cup. On Thursday, we're going to be having a replay cast of ESL Asia. I did mention before that we didn't get to finish ESL Asia last night, which was a little bit bittersweet. So we should be finishing it on Thursday. Um, because we casted half of the tournament already, I may even cast some ESL Open Cup Europe replays. We're usually asleep and we don't get to cover Europe, but we may be able to squeeze in some Europe broadcasting here uh, on Thursday as well. So... Look forward to it. Look forward to it. Again, just some replay costs to catch up on what we've been missing. Another big thing to point out is that this weekend is Home Story Cup. Home Story Cup is going to be going on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Three days of StarCraft. And we're going to have a duckling. We're going to have Dolan being a part of that. Dolan is going to be competing in Home Story Cup. So look forward to it look forward to it again uh, this weekend is going to be pretty intense uh there's home story cup there's ksl there's of course uh tenacious total tussle the hatchery cup and we have a show match uh on sunday as well so uh, we're gonna be busy <laughs> um no wtl just to just to clarify from my understanding um round 11 where's round 10 okay so this week there is no world team league I, I'm just saying that now. I should, I'm probably going to be repeating that over the course of the next couple of broadcasts just to remind everyone. No World Team League this week because of Home Story Cup. You know, uh, the SE Boy uh, admins and organizers, I mean, they have players like Chinese and I mean, players in general, they're going to be traveling and competing in Home Story Cup. Um, Home Story Cup is going to be an offline event. So WTL are not going to be clashing with it. So we're going to be having a week off from WTL just to leave room and to make room for Home Street Cup. So, yeah, everyone should be looking forward to that, looking to enjoy that. Um, we're doing, we'll be doing our best. Um, which means, for the first time in how long? I'm checking the calendar. When was the last time we had a day off? August? I think, oh, August? <laughs> Uh, we had a we had a, a couple of days off. We had the fifteenth off and the and the third of August off. We had two we had two days off in August. Um, ever since then, we've been casting every day, <laughs> every every day, Bobby, every day. So, for the first time in a long time, because there's no WTL this Friday, we get a day off for the first time since August. Ah, let's go. <laughs> Again, we're usually casting on a daily basis here. I mean. Technically, I could, I could do like a like an ESL Masters Winter replay cast on Thursday. If I really wanted to, <laughs> if I really wanted to, I could actually still cast something on 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 Friday. Uh, sorry if I said Thursday. On Friday, I could cast some some ESL Masters replays, um, which I kind of want to do. But I would also appreciate a day off just so I can work. <laughs> I have a, I have a lot of vods to edit and a lot of um. A lot of uh, vods to schedule, but uh, yeah, this Friday may be our first day off in in a long time. Friday is gonna be the first of December, <laughs> first of December since August. Let's go, let's go. <laughs> Happy days. Um, even if we don't cast on Thursday, on, sorry, on Friday, I'm probably gonna stream. I'm probably gonna ladder stream um, on Friday just to you know get some games in and just to stay in form. But in general, uh, tournaments are gonna be slowing down just because WTL is wrapping up. Um, so. Uh, December and and January, January especially, is going to be a little bit lighter for us. Um, usually, we take January off. Like, we should be putting um, Sparkling Tuna Cup and Grand Platypus Open and Tenacious Total Tussle. They're all going to be on, on hiatus for, like, a month. Um, so, we're going to have some more free days just so we can actually enjoy the holidays. <laughs> um, December is still stacked. But uh, for the rest of the month, for the rest of January, like, we, we should be having some more free days and, and just so we can take a break and catch up and you know 
uh, recuperate and recharge for the new year for 2024. That's uh, that's gonna be what's gonna be happening here on the Cranky Duckling. So we're gonna be casting a little bit less. Um, we're not gonna be taking too much. Like we're still casting like KSL and ESL Asia and ESL Americas and probably ESL EU and like there's still casting going on, but less than less than normal. Uh, so January is gonna be like half the cast that we normally do. Um, just a heads up, a heads up. Unless we find something else to fill to fill it in with, which we shouldn't, but. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for tuning in. We appreciate it. Uh, massage your marine while <laughs> your animals. Your animals, Poppy. With that, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for the support. We're going to be heading off here for now. We're going to be back in five hours with some more StarCraft. So see you then. Otherwise, hope you all enjoy yourselves. Um, if you want to support us, you can follow us here on Twitch. Uh, you can follow us on youtube exclamation mark youtube here in the chat we're live on the youtube on our youtube channel as well we're co-streaming or restreaming um so yeah yeah check us out we upload on a daily basis and that's probably what i'm going to be working on as well trying to catch up on youtube content so yeah consider well, consider supporting us consider checking it out otherwise thank you so much thank you so much for watching thank you so much for the support we'll see you guys in five hours for some gsl replays till then hasta luego bye Hasta luego.